to be absent in these bodies and yet go home to be in the presence of the Lord. We thank you, dear God, that your word has given us these promises. We thank you that the Holy Spirit seals us until the day of redemption. We thank you that, Lord, we are able to go back and to find that assurance in your word and to share that hope with those that we come in contact with on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. We pray even now, O oh God, yeah. that as we enter this time of worship, mm -hmm. that you will encourage our hearts and yeah. lift us yeah. up so yeah. that, Lord, we will be able to lift others up as well. You said without reservation in your word mm -hmm. that if you be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. Mm -hmm. Give us the power, the authority, and the encouragement and the drive and determination to continue to lift you up so that others may be drawn to you. We are living in a very complex world and a yeah. very complicated time. Yeah. But Father, none of these things have caught you off guard. And we thank you that you are still sitting on the throne and that the earth is still yours. Father, we pray that by your spirit you will bless us in this day. Bless every branch of sign as lifting up Christ and we certainly trust oh God that you would encourage us to continue to be the servants that you called us to be in these last and evil days and God we will continue to give you the praise glory and honor both now and ever our hearts say thank you Lord and amen amen what a very very challenging week we have had this week and yet and still, what we are going through, God is going through with us. I love it when you think back from time to time and you think about the 23rd Psalm and how the scripture says that even in the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Amen. I don't have to go hunting down. I know he's with me. When I got on the road a few days ago and I had to do some traveling, I knew that he was with me. He was with me when I laid down that night. He was with me when I woke up that morning. He was with me going down the highway. And when I was heading down, I knew that there was something that I had a concern about. And he managed the concern for me. 
and he made all the necessary preparations so that that concern was able to be addressed when I got back. So, again, the God that we serve is an on-time God, and he knows exactly where we are, what we need, and when he needs to release that need to us. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you at this time to uh, unite with us and sing together this uh, opening selection, uh, Love Lifted Me, on page 385. Amen? Amen? Love Lifted Me. Now, why is it so important that we need to ask God or rem be reminded that it's the love of God that lifts us because there are things that are going on in our world, things that are upsetting folks, mm -hmm. but in spite of all that's happening, mm -hmm. it was God's love that lifted us, amen? Mm -hmm. And it's God's love that keeps us lifted, mm -hmm. and it's God's love that will preserve us. And just like God looked, watch this now, beyond our fault, saw our need, we need to be doing the same. Amen? Amen. You know, whenever I look in that mirror, I think about Romans 6 and and and, and, and where the scripture says that all have what? Sin. Sin. And, come uh, uh, and come short of the glory of God. God is Romans 3. But over uh, in Romans 6 where he said that the wages of sin is death. death. Amen? Amen? And when I look in that mirror and I see me and I say, you know something? I should be in hell but for the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 385, Love Lifted Me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea, Despairing cry. despairing cry from the waters lifted me. The waters lifted now safe me. am I. Safe am Why? Because love lifted me. Love, love lifted me. me. Love lifted me. Love, love lifted me. me when nothing else could help. When nothing else. That lifted me, lifted me. Oh, I sing love, lifted me. Even me, it was love, love, lifted me. Even me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Blessed presence live. In his blessed presence. Ever his praises. Ever his praises ring. Love so mighty and so true. Love so mighty and so true. Merit's my soul's best song. Merit's my soul's best song. Faithful loving service to. Faithful loving service to. To him belong. Master 
of the sea. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. Billows his will obey. He your servant, Savior wants to be. He your Savior wants to be. Be saved today. church administrator and then proceed as uh, um, following Deacon Curtis will lead us into the throne of grace. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Building on a short foundation upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. For other foundation can no man lay than that to his lay, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Building faith, family, and fellowship on the principles and promises of God's word. Our thought for today. I am he, creator of heaven and earth, Lord of all that is and all that will ever be. Although I am unimaginably vast, I chose to dwell within you, permeating you with my presence. Only in the spirit realm could someone so infinitely uh, great live within someone so very small. Be awed by the power and the glory of my spirit within you. Though, through the Holy Spirit, though the Holy Spirit is infinite, he designs, he, de he desires, he desires to be your helper, to be you. Let me back up. He desires to be your helper. He is always ready to offer assistance. All you need to do is ask. Yes, Lord. When the path before you looks easy and straightforward, you may be tempted to go it alone instead of relying on me. This is when you are in the greatest danger of stumbling. Ask my spirit to help you as you go each step of the way. Never neglect this glorious source of strength with you. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to mm -hmm. help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. John 14, 16, and 17. Our key theme in verse was 2020. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. Sunday, October 4th, 2020, is our annual Women's Day. 8 a.m. is our Women's Prayer Fellowship. 11 a.m. is our morning worship. Sunday, October 11th, 8 a.m. is PDM meeting. 11 a.m. is our morning worship, and Holy Communion will be served following morning's worship. Sunday, October 18th, morning worship begins at 11 a.m. 
Sunday, October 25th, morning worship begins at 11 a.m. And Sunday, November 1st, 2020, 11 a, uh, 8 a.m. is when it's prayer fellowship, and 11 a.m. is morning worship. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Like I said, this has been a very challenging week, and there are a number of folks that uh, we've uh, had contact with throughout the week uh, and shared with and prayed with as they were uh, navigating through the difficulties of life. Uh, for those that may not know, uh, I did have uh, uh, con uh, communication with Brother Daniel, Daniel Petaway. Uh, his aunt uh, uh, passed a few days ago, and uh, she was also one of those. You know, one of the things that sometimes when we speak about someone going on home to be with the Lord, a lot of time we may uh, not... Um, address some of the, one of the questions that a lot of folks want to know is, is what happened, okay? Now, uh, there are times when we might share those things, and there are times when we don't, but one of the things I will tell you that he told me is that, yes, she was a victim of the coronavirus, and the reason I'm saying that is because if we're going to be praying for this thing, if we're going to be praying that God would, uh, 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 deliver uh, the world from this particular virus and uh, that uh, the technologies and the, the uh, scientists will come up with some type of, of an, uh, 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 vaccine that will help us through this thing. We need to call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, here again, we're praying for these folks those that are paying attention to what's going on around us, you'll notice that this thing is not something to play with. Mm -hmm. There have been folks that have been mocking it. There have been folks that have downplayed it for, for quite some time. But now it is showing itself. Uh, uh, periodically, you need to read some of the different articles that are going on. Read some of the studies. There is a study that uh, I uh, looked at yesterday that shows that there is a, a new group amongst the youth and amongst smaller children. There's a, 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 a new rapid spread going through some of the schools. Uh, if you're those that are athletic and athletes and have been crying and begging for the sports to be back in the scene, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, um, a new camp, uh, camp over the the uh, the uh, who was that the uh, uh, over in uh, where Brady used to be. All right, he is over the Patriots. He's the Patriots quarterback. He's got it. Cam Newton. Cam Newton. Cam Newton. And that particular game will not play today. There's another game that will not play today. Still, there are some schools where they kept fussing until they got the thing back. And, and I heard even some bragging the other day. I got football back. Yes, we got diseases spreading through the football too. And uh, so it's important for us not to treat this thing lightly. Now, at the same token... One of the reasons that I believe uh, my spirit was leaning towards singing love lifted me is because no matter who or what is going through, there's not a secret in America or in the world that President Donald Trump has uh, declared to, uh, a, a positive test and he is in quarantine, not only quarantine, but he is in treatment for the coronavirus. He and his family, his wife, and several others now are scrambling to get tested because of this, this terrible thing. Those that might have felt that I was kind of stringent in insisting that we set up stations and petitioning off the church so that we might treat it with social distancing, uh, I want you to understand I do not apologize for that. I am trying to follow the sciences, and I'm trying to be obedient uh, uh, to the Lord in giving us an opportunity to worship, but at the same time, doing it responsibly so that we will not spread these things. And, 
there are a lot of questions and a lot of concerns. However, the thing that I'm also impressed by and I'm challenging and encouraging us to remember is that we belong to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we represent him. Mm -hmm. And we have to respond according to what the word tells us. Yeah. And I was impressed and encouraged to hear how uh, uh, the other candidates are not taking this as a moment to jump up and down and shake a, an accusing finger, et cetera, et cetera. But they are sending their prayers and their concerns mm -hmm. that these folks would mm -hmm. be healed and that they would have a, 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 a good recovery. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So that being said, let us continue to pray, mm -hmm. not only for those that we come in contact with, you know, uh, just like I, I, every time I go in the store, I went across the street just a few moments ago, and I see the sign all over the door, uh, uh, no mask, no service. But the guy that was coming from the counter, passing me, did not have a mask on. Why? A lot of times these folks are intimidated by the the rage that folks walk in stores with. I want you to be smart too. And here again, it's up to us to pray. This morning we're going to talk about mm -hmm. the power of intercession. The power of intercession. And that's what we should be doing. We should be interceding mm -hmm. on behalf of those that may not be on board yet. You understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of folks that say, uh, I ain't wearing no mask and I ain't this and I ain't that. There's a lot of folks that are jumping on board right now, but there are some that still need to be, we need to intercede. We need to go to God on their behalf. Amen? Both community, on your jobs, in our world at large. Amen? So let's 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 go to God uh, in prayer and ask God to, uh, to take us where we need to go. Amen? Most holy and everlasting God, our Father, Lord, we thank you once again for another opportunity just to be amongst the land of the living. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity just to be able to lift up our voices and th say thank you for all that you've done for us because you did it out of love. Lord, we thank you right now just for blessing and keeping all of us here present. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to bless and keep us. Lord, we ask that you would bless the sick and shut in. Lord, we ask that you, we ask that you would bless the Graves family. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Lord we, ask, we, 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 give praise for the, we give praise for the reports of constant improvement. Mm -hmm. But Lord, we know that there's still more, still more challenges to come. Mm -hmm. And we ask that you would just continue to bless that family. Lord, we ask you to bless the Green family. Mm -hmm. Lord, they, though, though, though changes, have, changes have taken place, Lord, there's still, still great need of prayer. Lord, we ask that you to bless the, the Robinson and the Johnson family. Lord, we know that they, they, there's, there's challenges and there's requests, special requests for prayer. Lord, we just ask that you would continue to bless and keep them. Lord, we ask that you would touch each household represented here today. Lord, we ask that you would touch our, you touch our children, touch our homes, touch all those that come, that come within, our, within the confines of our household. Lord, you told us to teach all, even the visitors, your word and your precepts to love and follow you, that you might, you, you might be a blessing to us. Lord, we ask that you would just, you would just you, do Lord. that. Lord, just bless, bless us, bless our homes. Lord, show us how to be the arms and legs of your love. Lord, show us how to share with others the love that you share, that you've given us. Lord, we ask that you would bless this service. Lord, bless the pastor. Lord, bless, bless his family. Bless everything that's said and done. May it be yes. said and done to your will and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I want to thank and praise God for uh, Deacon Curtis reminding me in his petition of uh, a special uh, time of prayer uh, that I had with uh, Sister uh, Johnson this week. And I want you to remember her in prayer as she uh, 
has made that request and that as she's going through her time of challenge, uh, she wants prayer. Amen? Amen. And uh, I want to encourage you, as I do every week, mm -hmm. we need to call and touch base with our folks to make sure that they don't feel like they're out there by themselves. Amen? Amen? Amen. We are the arms and the legs. I heard uh, uh, one say, put it this way, that uh, uh, we need to be uh, the skin of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to be the skin of Jesus. Remember, the scripture says that God is spirit. They shall that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And we know that 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 you can't physically see Him, but somebody said that we need to be the skin of Jesus. In other words, touching folks where they are and meeting them where they are and blessing them where they need to be. Amen. Uh, for an 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 exhortation of uh, worship with our giving. Uh, here is a, a, a verse that says that I have shown you all things, mm -hmm. how that so laboring you ought to support the weak. Amen? Mm -hmm. In the midst of all that's going on and all this boasting about the, uh, the stock market going up and down and things of this nature, let me tell you something, there's still a lot of people out there yes. that are hurting. You know, right. A lot of people out there mm -hmm. that are hungry. Uh, we rode through one area. Uh, my wife, she looked up at this and I said, yeah, that's that, that there's a program here in the city where they put a box, it's like a refrigerator or something like that. And, and, and what you do, you go in and you take what you can need, use, and if you have something that you can put in there so that others might be able to get it. So there, there are all kinds of ways and different things that are happening that are, are, we need to remember that we ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen? Amen. We need to continue mm -hmm. to do things such as that so that we might be able to support those that are in need. Keep in mind Today, it's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, it could be you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I remember many, many years ago when I got laid off. Mm -hmm. And it was my mother-in-law that got me through. How did she get me through? She got me through because she challenged me. I, in my pride, I say, ain't no way in the world I'm going to stand in no unemployment or I'm going to wait for somebody to give me this, give me that. It was my mother-in-law that began to educate me on how the system was. The fact that I had already been working and uh, that was a system that was set up for when you have difficult times. Now, from by the grace of God, I haven't been out of work since that time and I have not complained when they have uh, taken those taxes that are able to help others while they are going through. So let us be mindful of those things. And I, I, I do praise God for those memories as well as those experiences. Would you turn with me? Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 25. It has already been stated that this is our annual Women's Day. I want to give a shout out to... Uh, 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 Reverend Anderson, Reverend Thelma Anderson, who would normally be here to minister to us, but we want to give her a shout out this morning as she uh, was in some kind of ministry earlier this morning, but uh, regardless of those things, yeah. all those that would normally be here, we want you to know that our prayers are with you, and we want you to be encouraged. We're talking this morning about the power of intercession, mm -hmm. amen? The power of intercession. Yes. Intercession is something that is very critical and is very important for us. Mm -hmm. Out of all these different things going back and forth, the viruses and 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 and, and, and all those things, you always find somebody that's trying to intercede, mm -hmm. somebody that's trying to go before others mm -hmm. on somebody else's behalf. Mm -hmm. Amen. There are, uh, um, when I pledged a fraternity, we were interceding and, and, and trying to step up to the plate to support 
our brothers that were online with us at a time when they needed that kind of support. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, in uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25, historically we are at a place where David and his men were roaming around and uh, Saul had just died. Mm -hmm. Saul had just died in verse 1. Uh, it speaks yeah. about how Saul had died. But there were other things that were happening. I'm going to read just a few verses. I'm going to read verse 2, 3, and I'm going to drop down and read verse 10 through about 19. Mm -hmm. Amen? Just to give you some context. And then we want to share some things about intercession. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Intercession, I believe that in this particular passage we see some dynamics and we see some characteristics that we need to apply in our own lives. All right? Mm -hmm. Beginning with verse 2, it says, There was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now, the name of the man was Nabal, mm -hmm. the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding. Remember that, good understanding. Mm -hmm. And of a beautiful countenance. But the man was careless and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. Verse 10. Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him, all those sayings. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they gird on every man his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And there went out after David about 400 men, and 200 abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute your master, and he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us. We were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall upon us both by night and day all the while we were with them keeping the sheep now therefore please pay close attention to verse 17 we'll get back to it now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a man of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Hmm. Then Abigail made haste, took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine, five sheep, ready dressed, and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs, hmm. and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. Here's another phrase I want you to remember. But she told not her husband, Nabal. Thus, in the reading of God's word, let's pray. Mm -hmm. Father our God, we thank you that over the course of time and mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. before the foundation of yeah. the world, you yeah. saw and you knew yeah. what yeah. we needed to know. Lord, uh, Jesus himself said that if, uh, the, the, the John in, in John's gospel, that if all that 
the, the words and the events of Christ himself were mm -hmm. recorded. The world couldn't hold all yeah. the manuscripts. Yeah. But we thank you that you preserved what we need to know mm -hmm. so that we might glean the principles uh, and the guidelines mm -hmm. that will help us to navigate the waters of rough times. Yeah. Father, I believe that there are principles that are embedded in this text yeah. that should show us even right now, right now as we are going through it, as we see and hear all kinds of, of, of things that are, are, are being said and told us to do and told yeah. not to do. And we see attitudes that are favorable and attitudes that are not. Yet and still, O oh God, we stand in need of you interceding on our behalf. The Bible tells us that Jesus sits on the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for us. And Lord, if he's doing it for us, then we need to be doing it for each other. We need to be doing it for our country. We need to be doing it for our leaders. We need to be doing it for our world. You said in your word that we should be praying for those that are in authority and those, Lord, that are leading us. So right now, oh God, show us some of the things that we can glean from Abigail as she stood firm. And she took her position yeah. so that she would intercede and the lives that were saved and the things that were saved. And Father, we just pray that by Thank your spirit, you, you will help us to have the courage and the convictions mm -hmm. that you have placed in your word so that we might live upright before you. And that, Lord, as we yeah, come in Lord. contact with folks yeah. that are struggling through these difficult times, mm -hmm. we will be able to provide them a reasonable hope. You said that we ought to sanctify the Lord God in our hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man to ask us a reason of the hope. Let this word be a reason and a hope for us. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. This is a very important segment and session that I believe that we need to look at. We will get back into Joshua and we will continue to see how this transitional time in his life took place. But even as we take this slight detour and as we recognize and realize, you know, this has been a tremendous year for women. And women have been recognized in, in, in our world, in our country, and, 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 and when we start thinking about women's, when they, they, they gained the right to vote, but then they still couldn't vote. Mm -hmm. All right? And now we have an opportunity to make some serious things happening. We see women in leadership roles in a, in a lot of different places and things of that nature. But the Bible, you know, in many instances, the Bible don't say sometimes... It doesn't even identify their names. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. But now here we find well, that the Bible identifies this woman mm -hmm. by the name of Abigail. Yeah. And the Bible says that Abigail was a woman of what? Good understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens as we start talking about intercession? Intercession, by definition, is the act of interceding. Amen? Mm -hmm. And, 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 and another definition, they go into prayer, petition, mm -hmm. or entreaty mm -hmm. in favor of another. Are you hearing that? In favor of another. As, as, as mothers, how many times have you had to intercede on behalf of your children when you know that they deserve the punishment they were about to give mm -hmm. and get, and yet and still, you were there to back your husband off. Amen? Mm -hmm. There are times, mm -hmm. there are times well. when uh, we might have went to back somebody off for somebody else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Intercession or intercessory prayer mm -hmm. is the act of praying to a deity uh -huh. or to a saint in heaven or on behalf of oneself uh -huh. or others. Those that were here on Wednesday night, we got into a little bit of that 
attempted an intercession mm -hmm. that those false prophets were trying to go through for Ahab, mm -hmm. and it just didn't work. That's right. That's Are you hearing me? All right. All right. The Apostle Paul's exhortation to Timothy specified that intercession prayers mm -hmm. should be made for those that are in authority. Amen. All right? All right. You can jot down 1 Timothy mm -hmm. chapter 2, mm -hmm. verses 1 and 2. Listen to what it says. Mm -hmm. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, and, uh, and giving of thanks mm -hmm. be made for what? All men. Mm -hmm. Then in verse 2 he says, mm -hmm. and for kings, and for all that are in authority. Why? That they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Now, that is a mouthful. Because we don't always see them responding that way. But the Bible says that we should still be praying that way. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Regardless of how things are acted out. From our perspective, yeah. the Bible says we should still be praying for them. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a lot of folks that are, are, are talking about defund uh, the, the police departments, mm -hmm. etc., etc. I don't necessarily agree with them defunding, mm -hmm. but I can assure you this. Yes, there is some support that they need. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's training that they need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe they might need to move some of the funds. Or, or, or take some of the funds and bring some additional people mm -hmm. in and, and, and qualify them. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, 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 several years ago when they, the police clergy, we used to ride around with them mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And, and I tell you what, before they let me get in that car, they made sure I had a vessel. Yes. Are you hearing me? See, so am I saying that no, no, that they, no, I'm not saying they need to defund them. But I'm saying that they need, we need to support them. I'm saying that there might be, there is some additional training that needs to yes. be taking place. Yes. Now, you say, uh, and as you sit where you are, and for those that may see this, I need you to know and understand, why is it necessary for pastors to preach and teach and include this kind of information within the text? Because as, 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 as we have been taught, we need to preach a relevant gospel. Mm -hmm. It's got to be relevant to the times that we're in, mm -hmm. and it's got to relate to the things that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you'll think that you're in this thing by yourself. Oh, no. The Bible has something to say mm -hmm. about everything that you and I experience in life. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Pray for kings mm -hmm. and all that are in authority. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. That they may lead a quiet and peaceable life mm -hmm. In godliness, you see that? Mm -hmm. Godliness and honesty. Mm -hmm. See, God's focus, mm -hmm. purpose for intercessory prayer actually hinges on verse 3 and 4. Yeah. Now, I didn't read them yet, but verse 3 and 4, that same passage in 1 Timothy in chapter 2. Verse 3 says, for this is good mm -hmm. and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. What was God's purpose for us having godly leaders so that godly leaders can create an environment so that folks might be pointed towards God and towards godliness? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? As humans, you and I, mm -hmm. everyday people, well, we often have a tendency mm -hmm. to step back, to withdraw mm -hmm. from interceding. Well, Amen. Amen. For those that have harmed us mm -hmm. or those we may disagree with. Mm -hmm. Now, it, this is this becomes important. Yeah. Because just because the, 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 there are candidates out there or just because there are leaders out there that are, 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 are pushing for things that you don't agree with, mm -hmm. don't mean that they don't need prayer. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord? Amen. And just like God can cause the king's heart to turn one way or the other, wow. do you realize that the Bible says that through prayer and intercession, mm -hmm. there, are, uh, there is a way for us to, 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 to have godly influence 
in the hearts and the minds of men, women that are in leadership trying to get us where we need to go. It is critically important, saints. Now, there must be balance. Are you hearing me? There must be balance. I'm not telling you to just pray for those leaders that are not uh, leading in a godly way. Just because, well, the Bible says pray for them, so I'm going to pray for them. Lord bless them, Lord bless them, Lord bless them. Let me tell you something. Do you know what praying for somebody means? I asked the question the other night. I said, when you, when you, when you call on the Lord, does God answer your prayer? If it didn't happen the way you wanted him to answer it, did God answer your prayer? Yeah, he answered your prayer, but he answered it on his terms. Huh? Doesn't that the Bible say? According to his will. Amen. Listen to what James says in 4 and 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, him, watch now, him that knoweth to do what good mm -hmm. and doeth it not to him, it is sin. Yeah. So God knows exactly mm -hmm. how to apply mm -hmm. prayer mm -hmm. in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. God knows when to act and when not to act, and he knows how to apply that prayer. Mm -hmm. See, we need to hold them accountable. Yes, we do. The Bible also makes it clear that 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 we ought to pray for our enemies. Bless them that that, 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 that curse you and pray for those that despite you. Amen. See, in our text today, we talk about a man named Nabal. Now, here's the interesting thing. I'll give you a, a quick snapshot. The Bible says he was a rich man. Well, and he had a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. And what happens when folks get rich and when folks are comfortable mm -hmm. and some of these rich folks, they begin to do things that are not savory with God. All right. They begin to, a lot of the, those, those uh, uh, people that have been in the news in the last couple of years, think about the, the, uh, the Me Too movement and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of folks that are out there because they were rich, they began to live like they were, uh, uh, they could do anything they wanted to do, do it the way they wanted to do it, and they began to become self-sufficient. Well, Nabal seems to have that kind of an attitude. And the Bible says that even his wife says that he was an evil kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, uh, you ever seen somebody that didn't have nothing and then they get a little something and now all of a sudden they're the nastiest people you ever wanted to meet? Mm -hmm. When they didn't have nothing, they was always up in your face. Can, 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 can you help me out? And then as soon as they get a little something, they are they, they, they're, they're really acidic in their attitudes mm -hmm. and their behavior. Well, mm -hmm. Nabal seems to have that kind of an attitude. Mm -hmm. And, and well, even his wife knew this. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the Bible shows us that he, he was never given a pass yeah. for being innocent. All right. When uh, his wife and others and even the scripture itself, he was never given a pass as being an innocent person. But what we see mm -hmm. is that his wife and those that knew her mm -hmm. expected her. Watch this now. All right. They expected his wife yeah. to intercede yeah. on their behalf. All right. Are y'all hearing me? Now, 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 this was some kind of a marriage. Well, the Bible says that she was a woman of good understanding. All right. And the Bible says she was pretty. Amen. Now, let me just let you know, this is not where I was planning to go. I was planning to talk about Esther. And we know that Esther was pretty. And, and the different things that, that, that surrounded Esther's life. But we find something like that in Abigail as well. well. She, was, she was beautiful, the scripture says. And, 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 and she married this guy. Now, let me just throw this out there. I don't know. How this marriage was arranged. Well, Amen. All right, man. But if, 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 if y'all hunting for husbands and, and, <laughs> and, and you getting desperate, you call your pastor and let your pastor run him through the ring. Are y'all hearing me? <laughs> Amen. See, because if I get you hooked up right now, then you won't keep me up in counseling. Well, y'all get that after a while. Well. Amen. Amen. So what happens is that, that, that they were expecting her mm -hmm. to intercede on their behalf because this thing was bad. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, so we see in, Gab in Abigail 
these characteristics that I want you to go home with. Uh, uh, she was a she has a woman of good understanding. Good understanding. She was a woman with a discerning spirit. She had a discerning spirit. In other words, she she could look at things and look at people and look at situations and look at circumstances, and she knew how to connect dots. She knew how to filter certain things out. And we'll see that in the text. And then she learned the fine art. Are y'all hearing this now? Of making an appeal. The fine art of making an appeal. You know, you see, and making an appeal to God is not a complex thing. Anybody recall how the Bible says that that there was these two men and the one was bragging and boasting about how he gives his tithes and, and he does all these great things. And then the Bible says that there was another one standing off to the left. He didn't even bother to lift up his head, but he beat on his, smote on his chest. And he said uh, that, that the Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. That was making an appeal. It wasn't complicated. It wasn't long drawn out. It wasn't somebody where he had to have a speech writer, but he was making an appeal. And the appeal that he made was heard. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's where I'm going now. That's where I'm going. See, Abigail, she was a smart woman. She was wise. If you go back and look in Acts, uh, the Bible says when he started telling them to go out and find seven wise men, right? Mm -hmm. Men of good report. It was good understanding. Those are the qualities that they were looking yeah, for yeah. when you start selecting deep. So as good understanding, let's look at this thing. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible describes Abigail's woman of good understanding and beautiful appearance. Mm -hmm. And her husband, look at verse 3. Mm -hmm. And her husband, the Bible describes him as harsh mm -hmm. and evil in his doings. Well, well, Amen. Amen. See, in spite of his callous conduct, yeah. the scriptural inference, watch this now, mm -hmm is that Abigail had already learned, and I would say from experience, mm -hmm. to intercede on his behalf. That's right. That's right. His behavior and his conduct had already, you know, after she got married, amen, mm -hmm. and she realized, oh, Lord, what have I got myself into? <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. She had to learn how to make an intercession. Mm -hmm. Because other than that, uh, she would have been all messed up. I don't know how long they were married, but I know that they were married. Yeah. And I know that she respected her marriage. Yeah. And I know that she stood by her husband. Mm -hmm. And I know that she was paying attention. And I know mm -hmm. from the text that she had regular interaction with those people. And the people that served them mm -hmm. respected her. Yes. Amen? Amen? She had quality. She had a quality personality. Mm -hmm. The internal evidences of the text indicate that she was a person that took time, listen now, to listen and examine situations as they came up. She paid attention. Yes, yes. And those are the things that God is asking us to do. Right now while we're going through the pandemic, right now while people are out there suffering, while right now while people are going through hard and difficult times, we need to be listening. Right. We need to be paying attention. We need to be calling our people that we have not seen in a little season. We need to find out what's going on in their lives while they are at home. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Just a couple days ago, Sister Johnson called me while I was at work, and I had to break away from what I was doing. Why? I could tell in her voice that she had concerns. Are you understanding what I'm saying? We need to be reaching out, and when they reach out to us, uh, we need to break away. We need to stop some of the stuff that we're doing and listen to them. Pay attention to them. Find out what it is that we can do to help them. Now, keep this in mind. Abigail, amen, uh -huh. was in the house. That's right. Abigail was the wife. That's right. Abigail was not one of those that were out there on the field mm -hmm. watching and, and, and caring for those animals. Mm -hmm. So Abigail was not involved mm -hmm. in whatever took place. Mm -hmm. What took place, though, was the fact that in that custom, while they're out there, and they're out there watching the animals and serving and all of that, David and his men. Now the Bible says 
at that time, well, if, you, if you do the math, David had about 600 men. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And when he got angry, he took 400 of them. And, and not only did he didn't send them, he put his sword on. He was going out there with them. Mm -hmm. But what they used to do, they used to go out there, and the Bible says that they became a wall around mm -hmm. all of Nabal, Nabal's people, mm -hmm. all around his possessions, to make sure that robbers did not come through and animals did not come through mm -hmm. and destroy or take away anything that was theirs. And all they asked was, look, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever you can do for us to help feed my men, yeah. help us to, to, you know, to keep going, mm -hmm. say, we will appreciate it. That's basically what they say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says mm -hmm. that Nabal mm -hmm. got word that, 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 that David had asked these things. Mm -hmm. And what David said, and David sent them and said, send them. In my name. Right. Nabal turned around and he said, well, who in the world is he? <laughs> Why in the world well, should I take mine and give it to him? Mm -hmm. Why in the world should I share my stuff? Now, I emphasize when I read that earlier, mm -hmm. the fact that all through what Nabal was saying, my, he was my. emphasizing all of the my, 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 my. Look at verse 11. Shall I take my, my bread and my water? And my flesh. Now, where did Nabal get all that stuff? God blessed him. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. God even blessed him with the servants. He blessed him with the resources. But it's all mine, all mine, all mine. And I've heard that kind of stuff even from some of our government officials. Uh -huh. Amen. He said, shall I take all that's mine and give it to them uh -huh. and help them? Okay. So David's young men turned their way and they went again. And what did they do? They heard, and David men went back and told David what they said. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing that you and I need to pay attention to. When the problem of Nabal's response was made known in David's directive, she did not hesitate to formulate a plan of action to turn this potentially volatile situation around. Mm -hmm. The servants of Nabal went back. Now I need to pay attention to this. This is this is interesting. When they heard how David's uh, 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 how David, how Nabal responded and that David's men were going back to tell David mm -hmm. and the word was that David was getting ready to come down and drop hammer on them. Mm -hmm. Now remember now these are Nabal's men. They did not go and say, Nabal, you ought not to do this. <laughs> they went to his wife. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? I, 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 I hope I'm speaking to yeah. somebody's wife right. today. Right. And I'm hoping I'm speaking to you women today mm -hmm. to let you know that you don't sit on the sideline just because, <clears throat> you know, uh, 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 I'm, I'm a woman. <laughs> uh, that's his thing. That's my husband's job. Let me tell you something. You let God call him home, it's going to be your job. <laughs> yep. All right. Are you understanding where I'm going? Yeah. It's important that we understand mm -hmm. that what kicked in right here was, yes, they, they are coming against my husband and his stuff. Mm -hmm. But what kicked in was her discerning spirit. Mm -hmm. Watch this thing work. Mm -hmm. Her discerning spirit kicked in, and it kicked in hard, and it kicked in fast. Let's look at verse 14. One of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, and he told her what David's uh, messengers were, were, were sent back to do. But the men were very good. He began to explain to her how they took care of them, how they were great servants to them, and how they protected them, and all those things. And what did she do? She could have dismissed them, mm -hmm. but she didn't. She took the time to listen. Mm -hmm. She took the time to analyze mm -hmm. this problem. Mm -hmm. This was a great problem. This is something that normally she should have kicked it back over to her husband. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But why did she not kick it back to her husband? Oh, well. ah, mm -hmm. Because it, I said earlier, mm -hmm. by her experience, and knowing her husband, yeah. she already learned yeah. that there was power yeah. in intercession. Right. 
she already learned that there are some things that she ought to handle herself mm -hmm. rather than get them in his hands mm -hmm. and things get worse. Mm -hmm. The Bible shows us that when you get down to verse 17, this young man, because he developed this respect for her, he says, now, therefore, mm -hmm. no. You hear that? Yeah. No. I need you to pay attention to this because this is a serious thing. Whenever you see the word no, somebody use that word no like that, he says, I need you to pay attention and I want you to consider what you will do. That ought to be underlined in your Bible. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because he's telling her, you need to pay attention to this. This is not something that's going to go away. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It ain't going to go away. Amen. You need to pay attention to this. Know what you will do. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Anybody heard stuff, things like that? Things go supposed to go away? No, no. You better pay attention and know what you will do. Mm -hmm. So he says that as you know, if you know what you will do, mm -hmm. and the reason I'm telling you this is because this is critical. See, in verse 14, why did they not even go to her? Uh, why did they even go to her with this issue? Because they believed they could respect her. Mm -hmm. They believed that she would listen. Mm -hmm. They believed that she would give them an honest hearing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they believed that she had the kind of wisdom and compassion mm -hmm. that they knew existed in her spirit. Mm -hmm. And however, they went to her because they were expecting her to intercede mm -hmm. on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. When folks call you, and they got problems. Can they depend on you to pray? Can they depend on you to intercede on their behalf? Can they depend on you? Do they come to you because they they believe that you would encourage them, that you would challenge them, that you would be a lifter up of them, that you would help them to think things through? Amen? Or do they come just because they need another shoulder to whine on? I want you to think about that. Because of the wisdom and the compassion that they knew existed in her spirit. That's why they went to her. Yeah. And, 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 and when they came to her to give careful consideration, he said, to what you're going to do, they actually expected her to do something. Mm -hmm. See, there is an expression that we use at work. And actually, I got uh, a couple of little, little stickers. And that expression says, if you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. And if you say something, do something. See, a lot of times we see something and we just sit on the sideline. I, I, I like what, what uh, President Obama says. He say, don't boo, vote. I heard somebody the other day say, stop complaining, vote. Right. Amen? See, folks will sit there and they'll moan and groan and groan and groan and groan all day long. And they will not get up to do anything. Right. Amen. Amen? They did not go to her because she was sitting on the sideline. Yeah. They did not go to her because she said, okay, all right, well, that ain't my problem. They didn't go off and get her nails done. No, that is not what they went to her for. They went to her because they were expecting her to engage. They were expecting her to inter intercede. Another expression that, that, uh, 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 that we have, and it's actually about a story, it's, and, and, and it says, I could have saved a life that day. But I chose to look the other way. Think about that. Think about that philosophy. They did not go to her expecting her to turn in the opposite direction. They went to her because they expected her to do so. Can you imagine? Can you imagine somebody coming to you? Amen. Now, I want you to, to put this thing in perspective. Suppose... There was a flat tire. Mm -hmm. And they came and knocked on your door. Mm -hmm. And they didn't ask for your husband, they asked for you. Mm -hmm. What would that make you think? Mm -hmm. That would give me the impression that they ain't got no confidence in him. Y'all mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> understand where I'm going? And I'll show you that in, in just a few seconds because it's here in the text. Mm -hmm. Amen? All right. See, the Bible says 
that, that the young man actually expected Abigail to intervene and provided her with a word of caution on approaching this scenario with delicacy. Verses 18 through 20, she laid out a plan. It was meticulously laid out and meticulously carried out. So these men had confidence in her that was lacking in what is seen in her husband. Yeah. Women, God does not call you to sit on, sit idle on the sideline when you see work, the work of God that needs to be done. The work that needs to be done may be that of encouraging your spouse, amen, to move forward. One of the things I've noticed over the years, when a woman gets saved before a husband, a lot of times they won't wind up going to the same church. Amen. And I've also seen times when women would treat their husbands, that when, when they got saved first, when women got saved first, they would treat their husband like a little trophy. And my counsel has always been, if that woman got saved first, that she should humble herself, because the Bible still described her husband as her covering. The Bible says that he should become her priest. So my counsel is, Squat down, get under him, and help to push him up. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I would imagine Abigail kept getting pushed down, 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 down as she was trying to lift her husband and, and, and interceding was not working. So there's another term that we use. It's called a workaround. Amen? See, there, was, there came a point where he was not going to budge. Amen. So you wind up having to do what we call a workaround. Maybe to intercede on his behalf. So some of the things that God may, may call you to do is to intercede on his behalf. It may be a workaround until they are positionally or spiritually stepping up to his assignment. Amen. And I've seen some sisters get behind their husbands and, and then they begin to grow and then they begin to take on steam and then now they are up and running and rolling and they're doing everything that God wanted them to do. But that is not what happened with Nabal. Amen. Amen. Some pronounce his name Nabal. So a friend of mine went home and uh, he preached here years ago but there's a message that he preached that uh, 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 I, I will always remember. The message was, if the work be of God, it will last. If the work be of God, it will last. So what I'm saying, sisters, is do you need to exercise your discernment. You need to develop your discerning mind. You got, you're got you a woman of good understanding. Develop your discerning mind. Look at the situation. Listen to the situation. Connect the dots and get the right folks together. Put the right kind of plan together and pull all this stuff together so that you might recognize and realize, say, I'm not doing this for me. This ain't about me. This is about God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Say, all this stuff that we're going through and all of this pandemic, let me tell you something. That forget the election. People are dying. Yeah. Amen. 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 We need to do what we can to try to help folks and try to encourage folks mm. and try to help folks to understand. See, folks don't start, all, all them folks that were sitting out in that audience and everybody standing in line and walking around, no mask, none of that stuff. But after the word was out, oh man, they were tearing down and pushing folks out of the way. They give me a test, give me a test, give me a test, give me a test. You understand what I'm trying to say? See, yeah. see this woman was wise enough mm. to connect dots and, and knowing that if she had gone to him, that things would have got worse and all these folks were going to wind up losing their lives. Think about it now. You got all them animals out there and these guys weren't out there to fight battles and David coming with 400 men and 400 men with swords on and, and David put his own sword on. And we talk about the same David that the Bible said that he used to sing a song, Saul killed his thousand, but David killed his, what, 10,000? You don't want to be playing with stuff like that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, we got over 208,000 people dead now. Stop playing with this stuff. Oh, we talking about just... Amen. So the Bible goes on to show us that... that, that, that uh, uh, if, if we, we're working for God, God is going to carry us through. Verse 17 again says that evil is determined 
against our mass. He told her, be careful how you answer. Be careful how you respond because evil is already determined against our master and, listen to this now, and against all his household. Huh? Anybody remember what, what, what uh, 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 Esther's uncle said to her? She said, uh, you know, I want you to think about this thing. Don't think for one second that just because you're in there that this thing going to bypass you. Amen? It's coming down the pike. And if it's going to come down the pike, it's going to come down the pike. And it might hit you too. Amen? And then the Bible goes on to show us that David was not sending men. He was coming himself. Verse 21. David said, surely in vain. He was hot. He was angry. And then he said, surely in vain I kept all of this fellow half in the wilderness so that nothing was missed and, and all that pertained unto him. And, and, and he hath... Uh, requited me evil for good. Verse 22. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David. See now you done, you done got the enemy list. Mm -hmm. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning by the morning light. Now here again I want you to recognize and realize this is King James. Mm -hmm. I didn't write this but listen to how God spoke. Mm -hmm. And this ought to tell you how serious he was. He said, if by the morning light, any that pisses against the wall, he was going to cut them down. Cut them down. So we, we find now that Abigail is in a position, she's got this knowledge, she is positionally a, 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 a person that can make some things happen. So her ability to make an appropriate appeal was needed at such a time as this. Yeah. There are times you need to be able to make an appeal. Mm -hmm. There are times if the appeal isn't coming the way that you think it ought to come, you need to do a workaround. Slide around the other side. Mm -hmm. You need to come back around the other side. Mm -hmm. Come on, women. Come on, wives. Mm -hmm. Come on, sisters. How many of you have you tried to get your point across and it wasn't coming across? Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't coming across, mm -hmm. then, mm, okay, what's his favorite meal? Oh, okay. What's another way that I? Oh, maybe I need to catch them when they when they first wake up in the morning. Oh, he 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 he's he's fresh first thing in the morning. He's more agreeable in the morning. Or oh well, let me see. What's his favorite kind of coffee? Amen. Or uh, uh, maybe when he's half sleep, when he's like a bobblehead. You know, you know what a bottle head is, right? That's the little things in the back of the car, and, and, and it just wiggles, okay? So while he's sitting there, and he's in bottle head mode, you just ask your question, and say, just say yeah. And, he, <laughs> and while he's bobbing, pull out your camera and show the bob. Speak the question so that you can hear it on there, watch him bobble his head and everything, so that when he wake back up, and you come back and say, well, why did you do this? Why did you? Because you gave me permission to see. <laughs> Come on, work with me, Saints. Mm. See, see, see. She led others ahead of her in this plan. She got all this food ready. She distributed it. And she told them to go ahead out ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. See, now, when I, when, I, when I look at this scenario, it reminds me of Jacob. Yeah. Remember when Jacob was going to meet Esau, his brother, yeah. and Jacob had already stolen it? Yeah. What did Jacob do? He loaded up them things yeah. and sent them all that food, and he yeah. sent this one and sent that one. Yeah. And it's interesting that Jacob stayed all the way in the back. Yeah. So if Esau would have been reckless and start wiping folks yeah. out, yeah. he'd have wiped out a whole lot of folk before they got to Jacob. Yeah. Amen. But the Bible shows that she laid out an appropriate appeal process. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen? Amen? She wasn't out to trick him. Mm -mm. But she wanted to be in a position where I can ask for a favor. More than a favor, I can ask for deliverance. Mm -hmm. She led others ahead of them. This is the same strategy as I mentioned. She did not toy with David's emotions or disregard his anger. She made honest confession. When you make an appeal, make an honest confession. Amen. 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 Even if you're appealing to God, make an honest of God, I have failed. Amen. Amen. God, I have sinned. 
God, I did this. God, I did that. She made an honest confession. She did not pretend that it didn't happen. How many times do we try to slip it in and try to sh sort of assign most of the blame to somebody else? So we make it look like I'm just reacting to what you did. Oh, I want that to, yeah, y'all real quiet right here. Mm -hmm. See, we can craft the, the conversation to make it seem like I'm only reacting to what you did. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you made me do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Well. Honest intercession tells the truth. Abigail addressed David and did not make excuses. Watch this now. She did not make excuses for the behavior of her husband. Are you hearing what I'm saying? She did not try to make excuses on his behalf. She said without reservation that he was a crook. Amen. She said that he was an evil kind of guy. Amen. So the Bible goes on to show us, look at verse 25. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and what? Folly is with him. You hear that? She's talking about her husband. Amen? She, she, she basically called him a bum. But, listen now. He was her bum. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Amen. Amen. She basically told the truth on it. He ain't right. He ain't acting right. And she did not ask David to take him out. She made the appeal for all of them. She asked that David uh, would, 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 would bypass this thing. Listen to this thing now. She didn't try to cover up what had taken place, but she did ask forgiveness for his sin and pass the judgment to her. Look at verse 23 and 24. 23, when Abigail saw David, she hastened and lightened down off the ass, and she fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Verse 24, and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, me, Lord, upon me. Let this iniquity be. She wasn't the one to start that mess. But that's what intercession does. Are you understanding what? How many of you husbands and wives ever wound up in a disagreement with your spouse because you interceded for the child? And until you got his temper toned down, amen, or, or husband, till those tempers toned down, there was tension between you. Why? Because somebody tried to intercede for the other party. Mm -hmm. Jesus interceded uh, yeah. for you and I. Oh, yeah. And he died while he was doing it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But he got back up. And he intercedes for you and I right now. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The Bible still say he sits on the right hand of the throne of God and he makes intercession for you and I. And she was there to make intercession and she asked David, let this, let this evil fall on me. Mm -hmm. yes. Did he deserve that? Absolutely not. But in making intercession, she made the kind of an appeal mm -hmm. so that he would have an extended period of time to get his act together. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know he didn't. Nope. Because later on, God had to take him out of here. Mm -hmm. I pray thee, speak in thine audience, and hear the words of your handmaid. Let not the Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. And she went on talking about her husband, all the different things that he did. I want you to know in verse 28, she said, uh, again, uh, when she went through all of these things, both in verse, uh, I believe it's 18 and 36, twice in the context of this testimony and of this narrative, you see that she did not tell her husband. Even after David backed off and gave them grace, she still didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. That's wisdom. Mm -hmm. But once he found out, oh boy, did he act the fool. Mm -hmm. 
He got angry, he got bitter, he got hostile, and, 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 and when he got through all of that mess, she, he, he, he really did show himself off. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that later on, uh, uh, he died. And after he died, uh, I believe God had uh, allowed his heart to get hard and, uh, um, and all this wickedness. And David sent and he communed. Uh, David ultimately married her. Verse 36. Uh, Abigail came to Nabal and behold, he, had, he held a feast in his house. He was out there all drunk up. So you need to know when to talk to him. Amen. Didn't we say that? Know when to make your appeal. He was all drunk, so she didn't say nothing that night. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what happened, um, the Bible says, when it came to pass, in verse 37 in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife told him these things, that his heart died. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. He was so big, his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. And it came to pass about 10, ten days after that the Lord did what? Took him out of here. She didn't ask David to do nothing to him. But she made the appeal. And in making the appeal, he got an extension of grace. And he had an opportunity. America, we need to be crying out to God. All these folks that are hardening our hearts against what God wants us to do. All these folks that don't want to cooperate. You need to understand this ain't nothing but grace. Amen. This is grace and it's mercy. And if you've been resistant all along, you need to say, hey, God, I'm sorry. Would you give me another opportunity? <laughs> Amen. See, God didn't call her to sit on the sidelines. When, when lives are at stake, she stepped up. When wisdom was needed, she spoke up. When intercession was needed, she showed up. Twice in the text, I said, she did not tell her husband what was going on. Not out of disrespect, mm -hmm. but out of respect for the lives that were about to be lost. Amen. David was coming with vengeance, but in, in, in her appeal, she reminded him of how this action would keep him from getting blood on his hands. Mm -hmm. She also reminded him of his future. You know, the Bible reminds me, in conclusion, in Romans chapter 12, listen to what he says. Recompense what? No man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Yeah. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with what? All men. Yeah. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place under wrath. For it is written, vengeance is what? Mine. Mine. I will repay, saith yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Therefore... If your enemy is hungry, do what? Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. In conclusion, regardless of all that's happening in our world today, as servants of the Most High God, God is holding us responsible and accountable to intercede and to do all we can to point folks to him, to help them understand that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Some folks learn early and some old folks learn late, but ours is still the responsibility to tell them, to show them, to share. Father, we thank you. We thank you for interceding for us. We thank you for taking the time to embed all through your word from Genesis to Revelation the importance of intercession. Mm -hmm. We see Moses a master interceder. Mm -hmm. And how many times, Lord, you were ready to wipe the Jewish nation down. Mm -hmm. But Moses would fall on his face. Mm -hmm. And Moses would make an appeal yeah. based on your name. Father, not because we want to be seen as somebody that, that, that overcame our enemy, but Father, for your name, your name's sake, 23rd Psalm, your name's sake, Father, we pray that you would teach us to intercede on your behalf and on behalf of those that we come in contact with. Father, when our enemies 
begin to get under our skin. Help us to see that we are the ones that need special work. First of all, we need to come to you. You said in your word that if your enemy has an ought against you, go to them. And if you have an ought against them, go to them. So, Father, help us to see that we are the ones that need the first round of work. And as we come to you and ask of you so that we might get back on track, then, Father God, we pray that you would help us to intercede so that we can get others on track as well. So, Father, we thank you right now for what you're going to do. We pray even now for that soul that's near as hell. We pray for those, Lord, that have hardened their hearts over these past several months. And now, Lord, when things start coming close to home, we pray, Lord, that they will not harden their hearts further and be like old Judas who goes to the wrong people. May they come to you and ask you for forgiveness. And may they come to you and ask you to bring healing. And may they come to you and ask you to help them through whatever difficulties they may be going through. Help the doctors. Help the scientists. Help the politicians. Help folks to understand, Lord, that we need to be looking at the bigger picture. And the big picture is not the election. The big picture is people. You died for people. And Father, we pray right now that by your spirit, you will bless that soul that, that, that is crying out and that soul that is, 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 is like Nabal and getting harder and harder on the inside. Soften that heart. Tenderize that heart. Make that heart aware of the reality that you still love them and that you care for them and that you died for them and that you're willing to heal and save and deliver them. So, Father, if there's someone, even now, that does not know you, well, they know about you, and they've not yet asked you to come into their lives and forgive them and save them, we pray, Lord, that you'll tenderize their heart and make it happen right now. Help them to say, hey, God, I admit that you're right and I've been wrong. And I'm asking you to forgive me. Come into my life. Save me. Bring me to that place where I can know you personally. And where I know without a shadow of a doubt that you know me. Father, bring them into the circle where they can find help, hope, encouragement, and strength. Father, we will continue to give your name and praise, glory, and honor. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Our hearts are thankful. Thank you. Thank you. And amen. amen. The power, the importance of intercession. It's not a joke, saints. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. I can recall back in 1972, on a Sunday afternoon, I had this terrible accident, and I wrapped my car around a pole. My face went through the windshield. The windshield piped out, popped out, and it was the first time that I can recall my nose ever bled. But in so doing, I get up, I'm laying out there with nobody there to help me. I'm laying out in the grass, and I couldn't breathe, I couldn't catch my breath. Folks pull up and they stop and they look at me. And I'm reaching out my hand and I say, <laughs> by the time I got the word help out, they drove off and left me. It was the grace of God that allowed a fine mist to, 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 to drop down on me. It didn't drown me with heavy rain, just a fine mist. And that calmed me down. I got up, got back in the car, figured them gears out. Yeah, I can still move this car. Drove the car back to the house, parked the car, went down to the house. That was just before mom and, 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 and the rest of them was getting ready to come to an afternoon service. And then I, I, I went to change my clothes, and I was going to head on up to 22nd and Allegheny to get the bus and to get the train so I'm going on to work that afternoon and make that double turn. My mom stopped. She let the service go. She took me down to St. Joseph's Hospital. While I was down there, 
Now the pain started to set in. Now, mom was interceding on my behalf. I'm sitting there and I'm starting to get all antsy and rammy and all that kind of stuff. Mom said, boy, you better stop worrying about that car and get yourself together. She said, I don't know what was going on in her head, but I know that she was interceding because I heard something going on in my heart. Are you understanding where I'm going, sir? Intercession is not a joke. It's mandatory. It's necessary. Yes. If we're to continue yes. to accomplish what God mm -hmm. wants to accomplish. Yes. So as we depart from this place this day, mm -hmm. let us remember. Somebody has interceded for you. And somebody needs you to intercede for them. Somebody prayed for me. Heavy on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. Saying, I'm so glad they prayed. Yeah, I'm so glad they prayed. Well, I'm so glad they prayed for me.